Okay, um, this time we're going to talk about a couple of more complicated rules for finding derivatives. And these are the product quotient rule, rules. I have an interesting approach that I, I like to show you. It might be a little bit uh, elementary, but um, just bear with me for a second. Suppose you wanted to find the derivative of x cubed times x squared, which of course, if you actually took the time to multiply x cubed times x squared together, uh, you would get x to the fifth. And then using the simple power rule, you know that the derivative is 5x to the fourth. Okay, so we already, we don't need the product rule to do this. But the reason I, I'm showing you this example is to, for, is to give you a warning. Okay, the product rule is not like the sum and, and difference rule. Remember, in the sum and difference rule, we could say that the sum, the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, but you can't do that with the product. Let, let's suppose you did do that. Let's suppose you thought that you could say that the product of x cubed times x squared was simply the derivative of x cubed times the derivative of x squared. Well, that would be 3x squared times 2x. Well, that would give you 6x cubed. Now, 6x cubed is a far cry from what we know the answer really is, 5x to the fourth. So something went wrong here. And the reason it went wrong is there's actually a special formula developed for the derivative of a product. And that formula was actually developed using the definition of the derivative, which of course we won't we won't go into that, but but just know that this formula came from this. Now this formula can be given a couple of ways. I can give it to you in what I call the long format, where you call one function f of x, you call the other function g of x, and you say the derivative of f of x times g of x is equal to f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. Or, if you wanted to, you could use the short form. The short form down here basically says, well, instead of saying f of x and g of x, we'll just say u is f of x and v is g of x. And then if you say it that way, then you would say, well, that would the derivative of u times v would be u times v prime plus v times u prime. Okay, now before I get into an application, let me just remind you, since multiplication is commutative and addition is commutative, this is not the one and only one way this could be written. Obviously, you could write this term first and the other term last, and it would still work. Or you could even switch these products around, say f prime times g of x. And over here you could say g prime times f of x, and it would still work. And that's true because, like I said, the commutativity product, uh, property of addition and uh, multiplication. Okay, let's go back to our, our example that I did earlier now, and let's see if we can find the derivative of this using the product rule. Now, obviously, in practical purpose, for practical purposes, you actually wouldn't do the product rule here. You'd do what I did earlier. You'd just say this is x to the fifth, and then take the derivative and get 5x to the fourth. But let's go ahead and try it. f of x, we're going to say f of x is the first function, and we're going to say g of x is the second function. So the derivative of f of x is 3x squared, and the derivative of g of x is 2x. So using the product rule, we would take the first function, x cubed, times the derivative of the second function, 2x. Then we would take the second function, g of x, which is x squared, times the derivative of the first function, which would be 3x squared. And that would give us x cubed times 2x, which is 2x to the fourth, and then x squared times 3x squared, which is 3x to the fourth. And then if you add those two together, guess what you get? You get the correct answer, 5x to the fourth, right? 
Okay, so now obviously we, again, we wouldn't do that in, in practical uses, but you can have more complicated products where you pretty much um, have to use uh, this particular rule. Now, in some examples, you might be tempted to multiply the expressions and get a single polynomial. Um, don't do it that way because we're here to learn the product rule. So we're going. I'm going to use the product rule on this. Now, here I have the product. This function is the product of two polynomials. 1 minus 3x squared is the first polynomial, and 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 is the second polynomial. Well, I'm going to use the shorthand form this time. I'm going to call this first polynomial u, and I'm going to call this second polynomial v. Now, using the product rule, the derivative f prime of x, so the derivative of that would be the first function, u, times the derivative of the second function. And you can bypass this step if you want to, but but right now I'm just showing you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the derivative of the second function with respect to x. Then I'm going to take the second function, which is 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, and I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of the first function, 1 minus 3x squared. I would advise you go ahead and write this step first couple of examples, but then later on, if you can do these derivatives in your head, go ahead and do them. So now, Let's go ahead and simplify this. So the first poly, the first polynomial, I bring it down, 1 minus 3x squared. And then I multiply it by the derivative of this, which is 4x minus 3. And then um, I bring down the uh, second polynomial, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And I multiply it by the derivative of the first function, minus 6x. And remember, you're adding those two products together. Now, you might want to do this on scratch, but I went ahead and foiled these two together, and I got minus 12x cubed plus 9x squared plus 4x minus 3, and then I distributed the minus 6x and got minus 12x cubed plus 18x squared minus 6x. And then when I combined the like terms, I got negative 24x cubed plus 27x squared minus 2x minus 3 for the derivative. So that's your final answer in the derivative form. Now, the reason we need to simplify these um, derivatives as much as possible is because later we're going to learn that it's going to be important to find the zeros. So it's easier to find the zeros of these derivatives if they're simplified rather than you know left in a form like this up here. Okay, so... Let's do a couple of examples. Here we have 5x squared minus 2 times 3x plus 1. Again, don't multiply that together because you won't learn the product rule that way. I'm going to say u is the first function, 5x squared minus 2, then u prime would be 10x. v is the second function, 3x plus 1, and v prime would be 3. So using the product rule, I'll take u times v prime, which is 3, and then plus v prime, I mean v, I'm sorry, v, which is 3x plus 1, then times u, which is 10x. And so I've completed the calculus at this point. Don't do any more differentiation here. Uh, the next step would simply be to simplify this using algebra. So distribute the 3, get 15x squared minus 6. Distribute the 10x here, get 30x squared plus 10x. Then collect like terms, and there's your derivative. Okay, um, here's another example. Um, I'm going to say u is the first factor, and then v is the second factor. And so u is 2x squared minus 3. u prime would then be 4 two, or 4t. rather, And then v is 4 minus t squared minus t to the fourth. And v prime would be minus 2t minus 4t cubed. Now, so I would have u, which is 2t squared minus 3 times v prime, which is minus 2t minus 4t cubed, plus v, which is 4 minus t squared minus t to the fourth, times u prime, which is 4t. And then um, go ahead and multiply these together. I didn't show the work here, but you can do the algebra. Again, right? once you get to this step, 
the calculus is finished and the rest of it's algebra. So to finish and get the final derivative, you have to multiply those together and collect like terms. Okay, this next example is actually a binomial squared. Well, we don't know how to find the derivative of a binomial to a power or a function to a power yet. That's, that's coming, but we don't have it yet. So what I can do to work around this is I can actually write this as a product of the, the two factors. So this would be the same as 2x squared minus x times 2x squared minus x. Now, so u would be 2x squared minus x, which would make u prime 4x minus 1. But also v would be 2x squared minus x, and v prime would also be 4x minus 1. So basically, I'm going to take u times v prime plus v, notice I wrote it here this time, but v times u prime. And then if I FOIL this side and I FOIL this side, I actually get uh, two trinomials that, have, that are the same. And then I can combine like terms. So when I combine like terms, I get 16x cubed minus 12x squared plus 2x. But then I can factor 2x out of this. And after I factor 2x out of each of these terms, it actually gives me an, a trinomial that will factor into 2x minus 1, 4x minus 1. So the final derivative in factored form is 2x, 2x minus 1, and 4x minus 1. Now, something that you can do if you, if you want to, I, I suggest you do this. Go to a graphing utility and graph this function, the original function, 2x squared minus x quantity squared. And I want you to notice what would happen. Let's say you set this equal to 0 and you solved it. Okay, well, if you solve this um, equation, you would get over here, let me show you over here, you would get x equals 0 for one of the roots. You would get x equals 1 half for one of the roots. And then you would get x equals 1 fourth for one of the roots. So that graph that you graphed up here, the original graph, look at the behavior of the graph at these three x values. And what you will notice is that at each of those three values that you're going to get a horizontal tangent line at those values. And that's simply because, you know, you to get those values, what did you do? You set the derivative equal to zero. Well, what is the derivative? The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So basically, you determined that the tangent line of this original graph the slope of that tangent line of the original graph is zero at these three numbers. So that means you get a horizontal tangent line at those three numbers. And we'll talk more about that in the next chapter. Okay, now let me finish this by just reiterating. Don't try to multiply those out um, before you take the derivative so that you can actually practice the product rule. Later, you might have to find the derivative of something like this, where you have a binomial to the 10th power and another binomial to the 9th power. And I doubt you would want to expand that expression to try to determine the derivative. Or maybe you've got something like this, a binomial times a, a square root. And that's difficult to multiply, multiply out anyway. So, you know, right now, just keep the keep these um, examples in the form that I gave them to you and apply the product rule. And then later, you'll have the tools to solve those more complicated problems. Okay, that's pretty much the end of the discussion on the product rule. I'll, I'll finish this section with another video on the quotient rule.